Starlink. We're, we're operating at just a much higher frequency. That's we have lifted. Vehicles pitching down range. Booster chamber pressure nominal. Forty seconds into flight, thirty-three out of Booster thirty-three. Booster and ship, avionics, power, and telemetry nominal. Getting good call-outs. Healthy systems on the booster as it starts to pitch over over the Gulf. All right, we're a little over one minute into flight, about to pack through max Q. Max Q. All right, so we are through the period of maximum dynamic pressure, max stress on the vehicle as it continues to fly. Our next major event is going to be hot staging, which is happening in just over 90 seconds from now. Uh, to get ready, the booster will shut down all but three of its Raptor engines. The clamps holding the two stages together will release, and the Starship second stage ignites its engines. The ship then separates from the super heavy booster and heads to space. At the same time, the three engines still firing on Super Heavy will flip the booster around. Ten more engines will ignite for the boost back burn, putting the first stage on the path for splashdown in the Gulf. As we mentioned earlier, the hot stage will be jettisoned for this flight, and that should occur just after the boost back burn. Uh, so we're about to shut down the first stage and perform hot staging. So let's just watch and listen. Ship ignition. Boost back burn start up. Stage separation. S stage separation confirmed. We've got six engines running on ship. Booster is doing its boost back burn, continuing now towards its splashdown site in the Gulf. Ship we are seeing all six raptors lit up on ship. Three vacuum optimized, ship three sea level, all looking nominal. good. There's a view into the business end from the ship. Boost back burn shut down. Did see one of those engines in the middle ring shut down during the initial asset. Oh, looks like we have hot stage jettison. You can see it floating away there to the left of the booster. Yeah, we did see one of those middle engines shut down during the ascent. Again, we are resilient to engine out on super Start heavy. That's why we're able to get through our ascent. You can see the boost plume itself in the background as it was coming in. All right, here we go. Landing burn startup. Looks like we got 12 of those 13. Down to three, including one of the middle ring. Down to two. Landing nice little down. hover. And landing burn shut down. And into the Gulf, here we come. We successfully lifted off right on time at 6.30 p.m. Central Time. Uh, thankfully, our weather was looking good today. After uh, that, we're also looking to do a relight of a single Raptor engine. Wow. There we go. <laughs> pew pew. <laughs> Been waiting way too long to do that. There we go. <laughs> There goes another one.
super exciting moment as you can hear the energy in both Hawthorne and Starbase. Everyone's super excited for finally getting to deploy some of those simulated satellites. Pez system moving down. Next row. There we go. As we said, we're going to do about one every minute or so. And this is this is just kind of a dress rehearsal for when we're going to do be deploying the V3 satellites. And these are just a, a massive, massive increase to Starlink's capability. Each one of them has its 60 terabits per second of capacity that's going to get added to the network per launch. That's 20 times more than what we're adding with every single Falcon 9 launch today, which, you know, step increase in capability. There goes another one. All right, so as we said, we've got eight total that we're going to go through today. It's about a minute for each one, but looking good on payload deploy. So we're about halfway through when we actually start launching the V3 Starlinks on, on Starship. We're going to be flying about 60 each time. So it'll be about an hour to get through a full stack. But again, it's, it's just going to be a massive increase in the amount of bandwidth. It's going to enable you know, gigabit upload download for, for people with Starlink you know, anywhere on the planet. And for us. Starlink is just a tremendous part of just the Starship flight test program. Yeah, absolutely. Always getting us that data. Um, and yeah, the, the amazing views we have on the vehicle today. Yeah, views brought to you by Starlink of us deploying Starlink simulators before we deploy actual Starlinks. <laughs> How deep does it go? All right, another one firing out. Pez looking smooth today. Looks like we've got one left. Almost there. Yeah, there you go. One remaining. So seven of the eight have been deployed. One more to go. And then we will have completed our first ever payload deploy operation. Just a reminder, we're on a suborbital trajectory. These satellites on that exact same suborbital trajectory, they're going to burn up. Loving the energy from Starbase and Hawthorne. 
all of your signals that are trying to fight through to talk to either satellites out in space or uh, towers down on the ground. Starships, big size kind of gives us a wake, but what really helps us punch through is the fact that we're using Starlink. We're, we're operating at just a much higher frequency. That's not what we want to see. So we started, we just saw some of the aft skirt just take a hit. Yeah, this, this ship itself, it's a little, little over 50 meters tall. Uh, we've got those six engines on board, the three vacuum, the three sea level, and they're down in that Asker region, which... Flaps have control. All right, so at this point, the flaps have control. That means we're getting into a dense enough part of the atmosphere that the flaps can start controlling us. We're not only reliant on those kind of reaction control system thrusters. We're going to continue hearing some call-outs as the ship makes its way back to Earth. So when we hear entry max heating and entry max Q, that will mean the ship has made it through the maximum heating and aerodynamic loads it will experience as it returns. So if it makes it through those, uh, we can say we're doing pretty well. I will say I'm happy re-entry cleaned off this camera for us. It was a little dirty from the weather, <laughs> so thank you, Plasma, for giving us this view as we start coming down. The hit we saw to the skirt, definitely interesting. I will note, when we started doing these missing tile tests, we were intentionally removing them only in the skirt, is that's, you know, it, that's not over your fuel tanks or anything else that's kind of structurally critical for keeping the entire vehicle together that obviously exposes your engines. So that could do some things for our landing burn, but for now, we are obviously continuing with this reentry. We are committed, Indian Ocean, here we come. 50 minutes since launch. We're gonna see those colors start to build up a little bit. We are at the point where it's, we're in dense enough atmosphere that the flaps have control. It's all about 74 kilometers in altitude. And you were starting to see some sunlight, so we intentionally time these launches right now so we have daylight. The sun should actually come up over the horizon on Starship in about three minutes. So as we get a little bit further into this reentry, that inky black below you is going to start to look like clouds and hopefully a bright blue ocean as we make our way down onto the other side of the planet. We're, we're kind of being mean to this Starship a little <laughs> bit. We're, we're really trying to put it through the paces and kind of poke on what some of its weak points are. I mean, we even have missing tiles over some of those fuel tank uh, sections of the ship itself. And so we're, we're really trying to see what are our limits. We're doing this over a completely empty area over the Earth. Yep, in about 10 minutes, like Dan said, Starship will be transonic. Uh, this is going to be the period of flight where the velocities of airflow surrounding and flowing past the vehicle are concurrently below at and above the speed of sound, so somewhere in the range of Mach 0.8 to 1.2. For reference, commercial jets have a range of cruising speeds, but most of them fly at speeds between Mach 0.74 and Mach 0.85, so that's 480 to 575 miles per hour or 770 to 930 kilometers per hour. Yeah, and after transonic comes subsonic. That just means you're slower than the speed of sound. We're still well in excess of that right now. Uh, but by the time we hit subsonic, we're essentially belly flopping down. There we go. There's that sunlight. So we're seeing the earth now come back into view. One of the other things we're doing during this, and you're going to see Starship kind of pitch uh, in some pretty, not extreme ways, um, but a little extreme, as we're trying to really stress the, the structure of it, of the ship itself, specifically those aft flaps. Um, so the ones in the very bottom of the vehicle. Uh, we're, we're pushing not just how well does the heat shield hold up, but how well does the ship structure hold up. We are... I mean, we are pushing it beyond essentially what we think we'll have to fly at to do something like a return to launch site. Um, so again, may not be a very smooth ride downhill, uh, but we're doing that by design. We're, we're really trying to find what are the edges that we can operate at, build up a good data set. But sun is up, clouds and water down below us. We are just about 10 minutes away, a little less than 10 minutes now. 
until we start hitting transonic and then subsonic. Once we hit subsonic, we're basically just belly flop. There's a buoy. Oh There's a splashdown. Oh 